here we are with the second episode of why is your podcast on a dead girl's phone my name is still niles and for the second guest we have kelsey scott who played rose edmund in season two of how to get away with murder wes's mom it was such a fun conversation to finally sit down and talk with her after our little back and forths after like five years um on instagram and twitter so it was really really fun to finally sit down and have a conversation with her it was really fun um it did have this little auto um like a little scratchy sound throughout the episode again i think it did it twice um so i will be i'm tr tr gonna try to figure out what is making that noise and hopefully fix it so it, it doesn't happen anymore but yeah if you do hear that i'm sorry but it was still a really really fun conversation we talk everything from her first um television role at 13 from 12 years a slave being in a best picture oscar award-winning movie to of course how to get away with murder and yeah it was so much fun having her on and she's always been amazing to me and so so nice and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this episode and yeah here we go thank you for coming on like it's thank nice to finally me. talk to you with our little instagram chats for like the past five years i think it's, it's been, been amazing right? i think <laughs> i first messaged you like the night your first episode was like aired i think when we first saw rose i think so that was like five years ago god dang it's crazy and man time passes wow oh man but i kindly i kindly i kind of wanted to start at the beginning with growing up in atlanta georgia and um just wanted to know like what form of media you had growing up or that inspired you the most growing up or who your biggest role models and stuff were uh for the industry you know it's it's funny because people ask me that and i wish i had like a singular answer like i i looked up on the screen and i saw this actress and i thought oh i can do that but that kind of isn't the way it happened for me uh I think if you start at the very beginning, because I started as a child actor, I was just a ham and my mom like, please let's find some sort of outlet for this so that she doesn't drive me bananas. And so <laughs> the stage happened to be it. Um, and before I started acting, I actually started public speaking because my grandmother- At three, it, right? Pardon? At three? Well, That's three right. was the first time I went on stage and sang, you light up my life oh. <laughs> for a pageant. Now, I wasn't quite public speaking then, but very soon thereafter, actually, uh, I think probably five was when I learned the creation of James Weldon Johnson. And that began my kind of public speaking. And then my grandmother, who was a writer, would write poetry and prose and, and motivational speeches and then before I could read, she would record herself saying her works. And then I would play the tape over and over again until I memorized it. And then I'd Aww. go out to the community and do stuff like that. <laughs> you know, and it started at churches and, um, and community events. And then it grew to national events and speaking with people like, you know, Jesse Jackson and Oprah Winfrey and, um, uh, and Shirley Chisholm when she, was, uh, when she was with us. And so then one day somebody put a script in my hand and I was like okay we're gonna memorize this too and then it kind of just grew from there and I started in theater so I was just on any stage that would take me so I think as opposed to me looking at this as a career and aspiring to do it I just kind of loved being on stage and in front of audiences and then it grew from there and then 13 you start as pamela in the robert guillaume show for yes. abc uh yes. how did that come about just did someone see you perform or like in the theater or kind like of not in the theater uh it actually all kind of uh, came out of a competition there was this <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and, uh, um, they were looking for four kids to host a week of family time programming on Showtime. So they went to 36 malls in 36 states and held these big talent shows. And so you came in, you did a talent, you read off of a cue card, and then they'd have a state winner. So they had 36 state winners. And from those 36, they chose Narrowed four kids. Yeah. And I was one of the four kids that they chose. And so when we went to New York to film the segments, the intro segments, 
uh, an agent came down to the set. She it was actually one of the judges for the competition. And she asked my mother to bring me down to her office. And then all of a sudden I had a New York agent and I was living in Atlanta. So, um, so yeah, so my mom would put me on a plane to New York. My uncle who lived in New York would pick me up, take me around to auditions, put me back on a plane and I'd go back to school. Oh and <laughs> right. So one of those trips uh, was the audition for the Guillaume show and uh, it worked out. Dang. That's so, that's a lot. To, for I know, right? to, <laughs> Like, I just wanted to know how you got the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, like a lot for a 13 year old, like the p traveling and the agent and a it, lot to take it in. It was, but I think again, really only in my adult life did I ever think of this as a career. It was always, it has always just been something that I, I really, really, really love. Yeah. So I think it might've been a lot if at that age I was thinking this is my career and um, it's really important that I get this audition, but that's not how I was viewing it. I just was like, this is so much it's fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that mindset really helped me to kind of take in all of these new experiences, just kind of as if they were something every day, because th there really wasn't anything to lose. Because if I didn't get a television show, I'd go right back to Atlanta and do theater and it'd right. be fine. So now there's a little more stress, but then <laughs> <laughs> it was just about having as much fun as possible for as long as possible. That's what I'm kind of putting or thinking with the pot with doing the podcast, like not getting too nervous and because the first one was so fun. So I'm just, yeah. yeah. It's been fun so far. Oh my God. Good. It should be fun. <laughs> and everyone's saying yes so far. So it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, graduating from Florida A&M University for um, broadcast journalism. How did that come into play? Or how did you get inspired to do that? Well, I was acting. And after I graduated from high school, I kind of had these plans, these grand plans to go straight to New York and to tackle Broadway. But my mother was an educator and she was like, mm -hmm. there is no way in the world you are not going to college. Right. <laughs> um, so I said, okay, mom. And uh, we kind of had an agreement. And the agreement was that if I got a sensible degree, <laughs> Then after I graduated, she would support any acting endeavors that I wanted to uh, wanted to actually embark upon. And so I tried to think of what I could do and would enjoy doing for four years. And I took my cue from my grandmother, who was a writer, and I was like, writing. I could really do writing. And so I said, journalism. And then I said, well, can I get on TV somehow? Broadcast journalism. <laughs> and, um, and that's how that happened. And so, I mean, I, now it was one of the best decisions of my life. Um, the relationships, just everything, the whole experience of Florida a and I would not trade it for anything. But then I was just kind of like, oh, mom, I just want to go to New York. Let's just do this. Yeah, so, Broadway star, right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, um, but yeah, it was the, it was the best thing for me to do. Do you have a favorite Broadway musical or play? Once on this Island. Ooh. Yeah. I remember seeing it uh, when it was off Broadway and just fell in love with it. Mm. Fell in love with that show. Um, so yeah, that's my fave. I gotta go with probably Rent or Wicked more. Mm. Okay, those are really good. Those are very good contenders. Oof. So yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We can, I, we can, we can go theater hopping together. Right. Let's go when this pandemic's over. Oh. <sighs> when the world opens up again. And right. Yeah, I'm looking forward Soon, to that. I hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, like, you can now we can actually see the light. Right. I think, I think. Well, in the beginning, nobody knew it was going to get to this uh, this magnitude, and then it was just kind of hopeless. And so now I feel like there is a semblance of hope that we're we're going to come out of it sooner than later. I get my second shot this Thursday, so. Oh, how you doing? How how how's your body been reacting? Are you good. Um, the first shot, I just was really tired afterwards, but I heard the second one gives you a little more yeah. symptoms afterwards, but a couple of my friends haven't really had anything too bad, so okay, I'm just excited to get it, so. Yes, uh. sending you good vibes. I am likely making my appointment this week, so I mean, you know, kind of wait to qualify, so yeah, let's get vaccinated. 
period. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of this thing. Oh man. And then um writing and directing and then screenwriter or actor, director, and screenwriter. Um, do you have a favorite of the three or are they all acting. pretty much favorite? acting is my favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> always will be I mean I really enjoy writing but if I if I had to choose one and only do that it'd be acting yeah I'm trying to write my first script right now but yeah how's it going it's too, I haven't really write wrote I'm trying to get all my ideas out for like written down first before I actually start writing but it's That's a how good. to get away with murder thing shocker <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be surprised if it was anything else <laughs> and, and then suspicious. I kind of want to ask you about your first short film, The Buse. I think that's how it's pronounced. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which it wasn't one my of- first short, but that was that was the one that went to any number of festivals, and we got a lot of recognition for it because that was my thesis film from Florida State, where I get my master's in film. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, oh gosh, I haven't talked about the Buse in a while. So you know those little things that happen to you throughout the day, like bad hair day, (laughs) missing sock, lost keys, those are people like that. So the views was about a magical world where those things that happen were intentionally caused by these creatures called buses. Um, (laughs) And the whole point is they put those obstacles in your way. So for a greater purpose, you know, so if you lost your keys, it's because down the line, dot, 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 and it was going to put you in the path of whatever or strengthen you so that you'd be ready for something else. And so so these buses live in this uh, this magical place and they're unseen, but they're all around us. And it was about a particular buse who didn't see his greater purpose in life and didn't want to be abused. And so how he went through the journey of discovering that he actually was helping people as opposed to hurting them. Oh man, that sounds. Yeah, I so tried I, to look for it to watch it, but I couldn't find it any. I don't think it's available any. I'd be surprised, but if you would like to watch it, I will send it to you. I would love. It sounds really <laughs> cool. Yeah, I was reading up on the synopsis like that, but yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun to do. We worked we worked hard on it, and it was nice to get recognition. In fact, um, one of the things that happened with it after I graduated, uh, which was kind of the first big industry thing that happened to me after I came to LA out um, after grad school was that it was optioned by a production company. And so for a while we were developing it as a television show. So that was just a really nice, cool, different uh, experience to have right out of film school. But um, as these things go, (laughs) not come to fruition, but that's all right. (laughs) I would love to watch it. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Okay, I'll get you a copy. Period, thank you. And then you also wrote um, the 2004 film Motives and the sequel for that. Um, How did that sort of story come along for you? Well, I'd done a lot of writing before film school, but I had not written screenplays. And so um, that's where I learned to write for the screen at Florida State. And at FAMU, I'd worked with a number of students on different projects. And one of the ones I'd worked on was a feature film that a couple of students were putting together. They had written it and produced it. And it was a big deal that these students were doing this film. And so I was an actor on it. So cut to years later, I'm in LA, it's post to grad school. And one of the producers on the film heard, I still don't know how, <laughs> that I had started writing. I know, I was like, I don't know where that grapevine was, but I heard that I had started writing and had this project that he was working on and said, you know, can you get me a writing sample? And I, well, the story of that writing sample is its own thing, but so I'm going to tell you, how, how do I tell two stories at once? Let me finish this one. So I got in the writing sample. I got the job. There we go. That one's finished. How the writing sample happened was that I had been out here and I was working and I was working as an assistant to a couple of executives at Viacom and I had a screenplay that I'd started writing outside right after grad school, but had not finished. And I really felt like I needed to finish it. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm in LA, I'm paying all this rent. (laughs) I should be doing something that that is sometimes somewhere in the vein of what I'm trying to do career wise. Mm -hmm. And so I asked for a leave of absence from work to finish this. 
I know, kind of crazy. I think I've been there like eight months. <laughs> I was like, can I take a leave of absence? Gotta go. <laughs> so, right. Well, my bosses were amazing. Let me take six weeks and I finished the screenplay. And then when I came back, I realized I wasn't supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be working a nine to five, even inside the industry. I was supposed to be pursuing this in the way that I had intended. So I gave 30 days notice. We're, we're friends now. There was a little <laughs> tension <laughs> immediately with my bosses. They went, we let you take six weeks. I was like, hey, no. Uh, but we're you. really good friends now to this day. But um, yeah, so I finished the screenplay right before I came back into work. And then I gave my 30 days notice two weeks after I uh, gave my 30 days notice was when this producer called and asked for a writing sample. So had I not taken those six weeks, had I not finished it, then I would not have anything to submit as a writing sample. And who knows when down the line, my screenwriting career would have begun. So that leap of faith paid off. It was the abuse that did it. <laughs> right. <Thank you. laughs> ah, it was the views. Nice. I Got see you. that. I like that. <laughs> Dang, I need to put a 30 day note. No, no. <laughs> get my spin off script started. Uh -huh. Oh, man. And then I have to bring up 12 Years a Slave with Steve McQueen, and you played Anne Northup. And I watched it last night, probably for the in a while. I haven't seen it in a while since it came out. And that last scene with him coming back, and how do you get into character for such a for us, Anne is in yeah. a story that they told. A couple of things. One, finding Anne was challenging because even in uh, the memoir, there wasn't a lot about her because, of course, it's about you know the journey that he took and the majority of that uh, being those twelve years away. So, and even historically, in terms of trying to find information about her on the internet and in books, there just wasn't a lot. So I found that I had to fill in a lot of the holes about who she was and, and, and what her journey was and to try to flesh her out so that, you know, it wasn't just kind of a, a two-dimensional depiction. Um, and I felt a deeper responsibility because, of course, she was a real person. Mm -hmm. So that in itself was a challenge. In terms of that last scene, that was perhaps one of the most daunting acting experiences that I had, not simply because of the nature of the scene, but because um, the year before my mother had passed away. And mm. so I had not really allowed myself to really grieve. Uh, I was definitely mourning, but I was, any kind of emotion that came that felt like it was going to break me, I would turn it off. So here's this scene where she's supposed to be completely open and vulnerable and expressing herself and, and tearful. And mm. I wasn't sure that I could turn that on because I had turned off my emotions for a year. And so it took some some talking to my mom, uh, mm. some sitting in my trailer with a, a quilt that my mother had uh, made mm. for me before she passed and just really kind of getting myself in a place to be open and to give that over to Anne. So um, it, was a, it was a big deal for me, not just as an actor, but just, just as a person, as a human being, as a daughter. Um, but um, I, feel like, I feel like I gave what was in me to give, um, not just to the character, but especially to that moment. So uh, thanks for bringing that one up. That's, mm. uh, I, I definitely pulled from my mother's strength for that one. Amazing, wow. And um, working with Steve McQueen, how was that? And I love Widows with Viola. <laughs> right, I was, right. I had yeah. to bring up Steve McQueen. Steve is silly, people don't know that. Like he'd be, <laughs> he'd be behind the camera rap, rapping Kanye. Like he's oh. <laughs> a big Kanye West fan, um, you know, which is good because the, the, it was so, the subject matter was so heavy that it was good that he could just kind of lighten things up at times. But no, I really enjoyed working with Steve. I think the story that I, I tell most often about it is, so if you're, uh, you just finished watching the film again, so, you'll remember the scene where, um, where Solomon and Anne are in the bed and they're just kind of staring at each other and there's 
this emotion running through them. And I think in the script, it said something like, they stare at each other and you can feel the love or there was something along those lines. So we weren't really supposed to be doing anything, but you were supposed to be feeling us. And, you know, how do you direct that? <laughs> how do you act that? And so the day of Steve comes in and Chiwetel and I are there and he says, okay, uh, do you guys need me for this? And <laughs> I was like, um, no, I, I know. So. And so he says, okay. So he clears the room of all the crew and he leaves. And then Chiwetel and I have a conversation about how do we convey what's in the script in this moment? We talk about it. We talk through some things. Steve comes back in. He's like, okay, show me what you got. So we show him. He's like, great, let's shoot it. And I was like, uh -huh. wow, that was really cool. Like right. for the director you to too. just say, I chose you. Now do what you do. Great. Now let me film it. And that uh, I had not had that type of experience before. So that was really cool. Let you do what you guys do best yeah. and just trust you completely. Wow. Yeah. yeah and then <laughs> winning the Oscar for best picture. Um, how does that feel to be a part of a Oscar award winning best picture? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure you can compare it to anything. Um, I remember the night very well. <laughs> I remember <laughs> walking on stage with the rest of the cast and uh, mm. with the producers and the crew. And yeah, I lost my voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I well, from the moment Will Smith said 12 Years a Slave. So we're all headed up to the stage. And I lost my voice. I went up on stage and Alfred was like, hello, dear. Hello, beauty. And I was like, <laughs> and, and, and Brad Pitt's like, fine job. And I'm just, just no, Fine language. <laughs> no ability to articulate anything. And it wasn't until everything was over, we'd walked off the stage and we'd gone back out in the audience to kind of decide what, what party everybody was going to that I found my voice again. I was like, I, that, that had not happened before, but I guess if you're gonna be speechless about anything, an Oscar. Perfect moment you know, for you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, yeah, it was a magical, magical, magical night. And I don't know if you know, okay, so um, at the Kodak Theater, outside of the theater are the, um, there's a, how, how do you describe it? All of the best picture winners um, are mounted outside of the theater. Um, I don't know how to, I'm, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Somebody's going <laughs> to Google it and they're going to see it, but they're all up there. So in the beginning of the night, of course, there was nothing up there. By the time we walked out of the auditorium, they had already put the title of the film oh, up dude. there. And I just thought that was the the most amazing thing in the world. I was like, we were just in there. <laughs> we walked out there and it wasn't up there. And now we're like there. We're like, we're memorialized right here. And I just oh, kind of like a plaque or something like a. Yeah. Yeah. But they had cool. already like mounted it permanently by the time we walked out of the theater. I was like, we're oh, the my. last award of the night. So they're like sitting there with, <laughs> with cool. them ready to see which Camera. one they're going to put up. So it was, uh, that was, that was amazing. Dang. Some in history forever. Damn. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's nice. Not just bad. to be just to be nominated too is yeah an honor and then to be i mean i remember standing on the stage and just looking out at all of the artists that i've been admiring for years mm. all of the people that i want to work with and they're just they're right there in front of you i mean Clapping that's for you yeah lost my voice but it's just like everybody's right there i mean I'm standing next to Julia Roberts on my way into the auditorium. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm passing Ellen DeGeneres and I'm passing Will Smith. I'm just like, these are all the people that I want to call, you know, coworkers at one point, <laughs> at some point and for, you know, on multiple occasions. And so it was, it was awe inspiring. Oh man. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Someday. Cause you know, who knows? Ma'am. That's amazing. Thank you for telling me about or telling us about your mom and all that. That was really okay. I have to bring up how to get away with murder now. Of because course you do. <laughs> I've been dying to talk. To <laughs> oh man. Okay. Rose Edmond. Oh man. Um, kind of want to start with the audition and how did that um did you know you were playing Wes's Christoph's mom, or was it like a secret? 
It was definitely a secret. Uh, they had changed some details in the scene. The scene that we auditioned with was the one where she shows up on Annalise's doorstep with the baby. Ooh. And yes, right. Yeah, it's just like, and cry. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the details have been changed. I can't even remember what the dummy sides were like at this point, but um, it was, it was a, a large group of people for the first audition, probably, I mean, when you go into an audition, there, I think, I think at most I've seen 10, maybe 12 people come in for a specific role in, for guest stars in the, in the past at that point. Um, I feel like there are like 20 or 25 of us. I don't know. There just seemed like a lot of people coming in for the same role. And because it was so emotional, you know, people were kind of like off in the corner getting into character because it was like, it was like kind of action and go, not building up to the angst or anything like that. That's and cool. so, yeah, so we, we did the initial audition and, uh, and, and of course, when you get the audition, it tells you when it's going to shoot, not always, but most times it'll say it's going to shoot on in two weeks or whatever date. Um, so it had been about a week. It was going to shoot in two weeks and then it had been about a week and change. So when I didn't hear anything, I kind of figured I just had not gotten it. Yeah. Then, um, then I got the call back and it call back was going to be like in two days. And I was like, Oh, this is still in play. Okay, great. <laughs> right. And then the note from the producers was like, you know, we really want to feel her angst. We want to feel like her heart is breaking. Now I thought I'd done that the first time. So I was like, Oh, okay. We want to go even deeper. Okay. <laughs> That's I'll show you. Right. Yeah, we can make that happen. So when I went back, I think there were three of us, four of us, I don't, I don't remember, it's, it's been a while at this point, but considerably less than the first time around. And I just kind of went in, I mean, you remember how her depiction was. So I went in oh, yeah. with, with no makeup, with my hair pulled back, you know, really kind of like downplay the clothing. And I went in a way that I don't normally, I think to auditions, I think um, you just kind of emote just you kind of regurgitate emotion. <laughs> um, that's what happened for me in that scene. And then the casting directors gave me like a, a redirect. And even when I was listening to them, I was pacing. I think I was sweating a little bit because I was just so in her because uh, there was no other way to really kind of get to the core of her other than to completely just um, open, up your, chest, over, open yeah. up your heart. Right. And so I couldn't turn that off while I was listening to a redirect. I had to just kind of like stay in it and kind of hear them and then do it. So I thought I went a little crazy. I thought, I was like, I was like, they're not going to hire me. They're like, over the nutcase <laughs> trying to get a job. We're not going to do that. that. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I guess that nutcase worked out. Uh, but even so it, was several days after the callback and I thought again that I hadn't gotten it because <laughs> at this point it was Sunday and it was supposed to shoot on Tuesday oh, wow. and I had not heard anything <laughs> so Sunday afternoon I got the call that I needed to be in a fitting on Monday and they're shooting on Tuesday okay. and that was uh that was that first episode cutting it close <laughs> uh yeah a little bit a little bit <laughs> and was that the first scene that you guys shot for Rose when yes. you was it yeah yes. um, or did we shoot that first or did we shoot inside the playground oh the bleachers maybe yeah i'm trying to remember which one was first yeah i can't remember but you know one that was a big episode yeah. so uh i can't remember which scene came first and at that point we didn't know that it was a recurring um, as far as we knew, it was just one episode. Because wow. um, again, we didn't know that she was, you know, Christoph's mother. There were, none of that was revealed to us until um, until it was time to shoot. Yeah. And were, did you watch the show before? Um, uh, you yeah. Watched, of course it, I did. <laughs> yes. And that's always yeah. fun being on a show that you're a fan of already. Right. Uh, it's a little surreal at first because you look around, you're like, wait, I've been watching you on screen for a long time. But then after right, that, right you just yeah. in. So yes, I was I was over the moon that I was going to be on the show. Love that you watched it before. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> it makes it funner knowing yeah. that. Oh, man. And then um, did you keep up? Obviously, you probably did. Yeah, I already think I you kept up with the show after. See, mm -hmm. Oh, man. That's right. Yep, all the way through. <laughs> what did you think of the ending? 
it really worked for me, actually. There, there have been so, well, you know, there are so many twists and turns and back and forth and up and down, and, you know, well, over, um, over the river, through the woods, whatever that reference is, um, that I thought um, they really found a way to, to bring it all together at the end. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think I was ever ready for it. The last well, you're episode, not ready but, for it to yeah. end. It has to end. You hope it ends well. <laughs> yeah, they did it justice. Yeah. Oh, man. I think I should bring up um, Viola the first time you met her. What was that? Again, like this, um, seeing her through the TV and then on a yeah. show that you've watched and then yeah. having her be there. I know, right? Oh, you know what? Now that you say that, we shot the door, the, um, the scene at the door uh, second. Second. Yes, because because of a story that I'll tell you. But um, it was a. Uh, first of all, she's so nice. Mm. She's so kind. You know what I mean? Like it's. There's always a danger that the people that you enjoy on screen or you know as celebrities will let you down when you meet them in person. Completely different. <laughs> there's yeah. always a danger, and so I was so glad that. Not only did she not let me down, but that she exceeded all expectations as, as a first as a person, just as a person, um, and then as an artist, because you you just can't share a screen with Viola and not up deliver your game. every time. Yeah, like you can't you can't half step in a scene <laughs> with Viola, and so uh, she was so kind that uh, that while there's a kind of a natural nervousness it dissipated rather quickly just because it was a warm room, so to speak. The energy. I feel like she I felt like she was judging me or, you know, <laughs> testing me or, you know, none of that was there. So I felt comfortable as an artist and I felt comfortable just kind of as a person. Uh, I immensely enjoyed every single second that we shared on screen. Um, I mean, I enjoyed just, uh, just bonding off screen, but on screen, I just, I, I loved it all. I loved it all. And I remember after we finished filming the that first day, that first episode, so I was wrapped. So we had just finished doing the scene where I, you know, I come to the door and I give her my baby. And so I was still a little keyed up, you know, not as much as in the callback, <laughs> but, but I was still just like a little keyed up and I was waiting for Transpo to come and take me back to base camp so that I could leave because I was wrapped for the day. And uh, I was just kind of standing in front of my chair, just kind of trying to come down. And she was several feet away from me, several yards maybe away from me. And um, she looked up and she saw me. And I think she just recognized what was happening. And so she just crossed over to me and hugged me. Oh. And um, yeah, like, like that's her heart, you know? Um, yeah, so I just, I always remembered her reaching out to me as an artist and as a person when, you know, technically we're off the clock. She didn't have to do that. Um, and yeah, that's one of my very special memories of working with her. Oh yeah, def that would be <laughs> in my top. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. That you, I feel like you can always get that through her interviews and all that, that she's like genuinely just... Authentic. An amazing human. Yeah, yeah. Just not, you know, not impressed by the glitz and the glamour of it. You know, I mean, she's aware of it, but it's not taking over. Not yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. that she <laughs> <laughs> and then you also had a scene with one of my favorite characters, Eve, played by Fam K. I was wondering if you could talk about working with her also. Yeah. Um, similarly, I mean, and that scene, especially because we're supposed to be so, you know, we're, we're antagonists, you know, like we're, we're both wanting something from each other that the other is not willing to give. Uh, it was, I think just as artists, it was a really cool battlefield <laughs> inside of that scene. And she can be intimidating. I mean, def I mean the character definitely, but you yeah. know, but I think it's, I think even just the way she held herself in that moment as a person and an artist, it totally um, 
fed the scene in a, in a way that I think just made it more, more visceral for both of us. So I just, I, I appreciate um, when we're not afraid to go head to head uh, in right. service of the scene. So yeah, I mean, great experiences all around. I didn't have, there was not an actor or a crew member or, uh, or, or a producer that ever made me feel anything other than a part of the team of, of telling this story in my entire, on all the episodes that I did. And, mm -hmm. and I can't say that about everything. And so I am, you know, thankful and thankful and grateful to be able to, to honestly say that about my experience on the show. I love that. <laughs> I loved Eve as I had to bring up Fam K. Yeah. <laughs> every time every yeah. time she came back, I was screaming at the TV. <laughs> I can see you doing that too. You were screaming. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God. And then the big scene with Rose uh, when she commits suicide with mm -hmm. the knife. I think it was a knife, a kitchen a knife. knife. Yeah. <laughs> How was that preparing for that and all like the behind the scenes? with like the blood and the props yeah. and it was a lot it looked real or it, it always <laughs> oh, did like a good okay. job like doing that on the show so Thank what was you. that I'm killing myself yes that ah. was <laughs> you know there's a lot to think about um that scene and the driving scene and when Christoph you know jumps out of the car that um, runs away. <laughs> yeah you know you don't you don't think about for instance, let me, I'm going to jump to the driving scene and I'll come back to the murder scene. Perfect. So you've got, okay. So you've got a camera rig on the passenger side. You've got a camera rig on the front of the car. Oh you have a child in the car. You're actually driving the car. Um, you're Other cars to, around. Yes. There are, I mean, there are picture cars in front and behind. So it's not like we're just kind of in general traffic, but yeah you're still operating the vehicle with, you know, thousands of dollars of equipment on there <laughs> and a, an actual human being, <laughs> you I'm know, and you're supposed to drive and then, and then speak and then stop and then get out and then run. And so there's so many, you know, and you start to hit this specific mark and make sure that oh it stops God. here and you're looking here at this moment. And so there's so many moving parts that it's, it would be simple to forget to act <laughs> because you're like, did I hit everything I was supposed to technically, you know, and then, oh yeah, the rose. So I had never had that experience before. So it was, it was educational <laughs> in trying to figure out how to do everything um, and still kind of be her. So jumping into the murder sequence, I was a little more well-prepared because we had, you know, done the driving sequence. Um, but there was, I mean, even, because for the knife, there was this whole prosthetic thing. So they basically rebuilt my torso oh my and so that they could run a tube in here so that there would be a, a wound that would then bleed after. And so there was that shot where the blood comes down. There's, there's a shot before where you've got a, a knife that's magnetic on one side and there's a magnet inside the prosthetic in my neck. And so you have to hit it in the exact right position. So oh, that it no. Fits. And then when you let it go, the knife is in you as opposed to like, and it falls. Um, and then there's the falling on the ground and then you're running into the fake belly that is Annalise's at the time. So don't let the, the knife fall out of your neck. There's it's so <laughs> much happening at once and it's crazy and it's so much fun. Oh. <laughs> it's like just making all of that work. So, um, and you act. Too. don't forget to act uh, so yeah that was again a new experience I had not done you know kind of like that level of prosthetic and um and and blood and gushing and then the you know the the of blood. it was a lot it was a lot I was washing blood out of my braids for a oh. long time <laughs> but uh yeah but it was uh yeah, there's there's just nothing to compare that to at the moment in my career, but I would love to do something like that that just kind of requires that. This is a whole different skill set, you know, to, to do all of those things at once. Got to get you in a horror movie or something like a... Yeah, but <laughs> you know, I mean, I hear you in a horror movie, but I'm thinking something more along the lines of this that's um, that's a different kind of drama where it's, it's more contained. An emotional yeah. play into it too, yeah. I mean, it's not just, I don't wanna do blood and guts for the sake of blood and guts. I want it to be a part of- For you two know. hours straight, yeah. <laughs> yes, for two hours straight, yeah. <laughs> so. Did you ever miss the 
magnetic mark on the no test. luckily i did a lot of you know practicing before so me before <laughs> the shot was a lot of <laughs> <laughs> just you know i'm sure i looked a little crazy but yeah viola we, we sitting over there <laughs> viola and then sitting there's over. the after you die you've got all this stuff on you so the whole like you know blank stare and not blinking and not breathing oh and you know and hope and hopefully that single tear that goes down you know <laughs> So, Caught the camera, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So. And then he comes in and pulls the knife out, thinking he's helping, or he's just a kid. Oh man, yeah, and and then, the, you know the jerk and the yeah. Oh, yeah. I that looks so much like heart. Oh my god, <laughs> damn, that's crazy. <laughs> I, oh my god, processing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like getting the words in, and then like Rose's last words to Annalise are, "Take care of my boy," yeah, and then that's Annalise's like with Wes and just always trying to look after him and getting him off the wait list and then I feel like they did a really good job connecting Annalise and Wes and it just makes it even more heartbreaking when we find out Wes is under the sheet and all that so I love that they did a good job with that yeah it was it was it was really well done it's really well done Oh my God. No. Are you? Are you? Wait. Are you? What's happening? Are you no, I'm just up? joking. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm trying to process the scene and think about the process. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Where are we? At? And then Rose coming back in the season three finale with the reveal, like that Wallace wasn't the one that raped Rose, and it was Charles. Mm -hmm. Did you film that at the same time with the season two stuff, or did you come back? No, at a... we came back. Yeah, we came back to film that. Damn. What were you excited coming back or always? <laughs> you know, I was like, does anybody want to remember Rose again so I could come back again? <laughs> <Be a ghost. laughs> for... <laughs> it's like right. It's like literally all you have to do is think of me and I can come back. <laughs> so... Play a different character. Like <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, just like, well, that'd be weird. No, I just mean <laughs> coming back as as Rose. You know, they're obviously you're um, revealing all of the information, but then I was always just like, you know, in case anybody wants to go back and wonder if they were right. Reveal a little more. <laughs> yeah. It's a little different than characters that get killed off on the show, you know, in, in the now. Right. You know, I was always a memory. So, fan Our, question. The only, the, we kind of already at, answered one. Okay. But the other one was from Matt, and he wanted to know what your favorite scene was that you shot on murder out of your six episodes. Oh, I have, I have two, I have two, yes, um, so the first one, oh, three, okay, all right, all right, I'll, I'll break it down to two, I'll break it down to two, um, I think the first one was, um, right before her suicide, that interaction, between Rose and Annalise when Annalise comes in um, and, and Rose is getting an idea of what's going on and how Kristoff is in danger. And not just, you know, you know um, the idea of not being owned, um, the idea that, uh, that, that this, this man does not have control over my son's life, over my life. I've been, I've, I was born free and I'll stay free. Like just that whole, moment there and the way Annalise handles her in that moment. It's almost like watching a skittish animal, the the way that she approached her. And yes, I understand. I'm here. You know, so I, I don't know, there was something about that that dynamic that that I loved. Um, and then I'd say that my second favorite scene was the uh, the interrogation scene with Eve. Um, that one um, that one got to me I remember in one of the takes, um, just before she'd asked me, well, she'd asked me whether or not I was going to um, essentially cooperate. And when you're doing television, especially, you're aware that, you know, there are commercial breaks <laughs> when you're doing, you know, kind of network television. And so you wanna take your, your moment to, to give to the character 
if they're thinking of something or if they're making a decision, but you don't want to sit in it too long because that could affect editing and, you know, we got to move on with the show and there's time. Right. Yeah. So you're always aware of that. And so I remember this one take, you know, she, you know, kind of lays it, lays it out and says, okay, here are your options. What are you going to do? And I wanted to give the line, which was, I'll do it. But in the moment, I opened my mouth to say it and Rose wasn't ready to say it. So I, I, I did kind of like this open mouth thing. And then I closed my mouth and went back out. And I was like, oh, wait, in my head, I was like, I'm taking too much time. I've got to answer the question. And so I answered the question, you know, but that moment where Rose wasn't ready was so um, rich for me as an actress because Kelsey knew that I needed to move on with the scene, but Rose wasn't ready. And those don't always so happen for the, the character yeah. just kind of takes over the process. And so that's the take that they ended up using. And I thought I'd opened my mouth really wide to be like, ah, and then not. But when I saw it back, I, it was just a slight this and that, and then going back forward. And, and I think because of what happened with me internally um, and how it played out on screen, that that was the reason they chose that take. But that was one of the reasons why that scene just uh, is memorable for me. So those two are my favorites, you know, I mean, pretty much any time I'm working with Viola, but that specific right. scene was my favorite with her and, uh, and then the interrogation scene. That was such a long answer. I hope you know. Oh, I love this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Like, laughs> Thank you, Matt, path. for the question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then other shows, um, House and Grey's Anatomy, NCIS, Criminal Minds all of those in like the late 2000s and then do you have any funny or memorable stories from those shows oh gosh whoa that's a that's a big question I'm trying to think funny or memorable stories long time ago <laughs> for those ones yeah, well, yeah I mean I think I just had a lot of uh I had a lot of fun um I think I always do I mean when I did house I got to work with James Earl Jones I mean Oof. yeah that was that was really nice <laughs> bucket list <laughs> Pardon? bucket list check yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've had a chance I've had a chance to work with uh, with some really heavy hitters that um I mean in in true detective working with Matthew McConaughey and Harrelson and um working with Melissa Leo on Treme uh of course James Earl Jones I mean you know I just I've Lisa been really Ray. fortunate you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. Well, because Issa and I, we never had any scenes together because uh, I'm I'm on as one of Molly's coworkers. But I really have had a great chance to watch her do both. Like the first episode that I did, I actually met her in the makeup trailer, and then she went and did her scene. And then the next time I saw her, she was behind the camera calling the shots. And I just oh, always yeah. thought that that was a really great place to be in, where you had oh. created this entire world and you could exist in both places on it and, and what what it takes to do something like that to maintain something like that on a level that people are, are still awarding you and, and recognizing you for it so um so while we didn't share the screen uh it's really nice to just see her doing her thing at that level so yeah i i think i've been i've been i've been career fortunate um, <laughs> i do remember though when i was in grade uh speaking of of, of semi-funny things <laughs> um so um I was on set. So remember I was talking about that idea of things kind of being surreal and, oh, yeah. and stepping into the world that you've been watching. So I've been watching Grey's for years and so I'm sitting on, I'm on set um, and oh gosh, I'm forgetting her character name in this moment. <sighs> okay, I'll remember that later. <laughs> but I'm on, I'm on screen <laughs> and I'm just like, staring at the actress because I <laughs> can't believe I'm there and and then she looks up and I realize that I'm staring at her and I'm like oh <laughs> you're looking really right now Kelsey and I just I did one of those it was almost like a comedy I was like <laughs> just like I'm not Over staring there. at you I'm perfectly fine with just being on the set and I'm um and I'm able to take this all in. I'm a professional and you know. Um, but every once in a while you do just kind of acknowledge that this is all um, get lost in the moment, yeah. Yeah, and I actually think that's important sometimes because if while you want to take the process in stride and you don't want you don't want that sort of thing to kind of get in the way of what you're doing. You also have to 
allow yourself to be a little wowed by it because it's it's movie magic you know it's supposed to be you know the elevation of smoke and mirrors and when you step inside it i think it's okay to acknowledge that you know this is different and 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 cool and exhilarating and scary i don't i don't ever want to be blase about the process i don't want to be like ah, i'm going to set have it get old and like, yeah, yeah if, if, if that's the feeling then this isn't what i should be doing i should always be excited about this process and you know so far that's that's been the case mm. do you remember what your character on grace or what you were in the hospital her, for <laughs> yeah her, well i wasn't in the hospital my daughter was uh, oh, the daughter, her name, yeah. i think her name was karen been a while but um yeah so it was the season finale of that season whatever it was it was where the shooter comes in the hospital do you remember that i mean oh it's yeah one of the earlier seasons right where he comes season in six yeah did you just call out the season you are amazing how did you yeah. <laughs> That's, that is that is really impressive okay so they had yeah. the big season finales before murder <laughs> came on so i always remember yeah yeah so yeah i was there with my husband and my daughter and she was having stomach pains and so yeah oh man yeah i remember <laughs> so. that's that's impressive a little scary but also very impressive <laughs> oh man yeah i remember and i'm kind of touching on insecure anymore um insecure again um felicia was your character uh mm -hmm. is there any more coming up for her or uh yeah yep yeah. uh we just shot last week in fact uh so so she is going to be appearing on this upcoming final season of insecure yeah uh, yeah i think they took a break between i think didn't they between a season or so yeah i mean i think most most productions had you know um a production <laughs> reaction to COVID, so they did the same thing oh man any um other upcoming projects you can tease that i can tease hmm. Hmm. um <laughs> i know right it's like it's like you, you <laughs> confer with counsel can i yeah um Calls <laughs> right i don't think that i can tease not yet let me wait till the ink is dry <laughs> 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 then i'll send i'll send you a message on uh, instagram and be like okay you can add this to the end but um but i'm also doing things behind the scenes because i i am still a working screenwriter so uh sometimes i'm writing for other people sometimes there are scripts that i'm writing myself and pitching and shopping and so all of that is going on so when i'm not in front of the camera then i am working on developing projects and so i have my own uh slate of projects that keep me busy <laughs> any writing tips for someone trying to get into that finish the script period <laughs> well no because yeah we not ideas are abundant and I, it's, it's not out of the realm of reason that you start something because you're really excited about it and then it gets you know you get kind of like in the thick of it after you've rolled up your sleeves and are really trying to work through it and any number of things can happen to either discourage you or life just get just gets in the way and uh, so you could have a backlog of you know semi-completed scripts. And I think that if you really want to do something with the script, or if you really want to call yourself a writer, you have to force yourself to finish the script. See it all um, the way through. And it's yeah. it's a first draft, so it's likely not ready to shoot. <laughs> so don't try to write the final draft in your first draft. Just get it out because you're going to be rewriting it. So get all of the ideas on paper so that you can start the process of rewriting so you can get it to a point where you can show it to someone or you can use it as a writing sample or you can shop it, but you have to finish it first. So that's always my first bit of advice, finish. <laughs> right, that. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can have like so many unfinished drafts then. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. I gotta get on that. Oh man, uh -oh. it's a it's a it sounds like you have a backlog of scripts there. <laughs> no, just no, of course not. No, not at all. Push the pile away from the camera. <laughs> now I'm trying to write like a spin-off idea for Tegan, Amira Van's character, because I feel like they dropped a lot of little breadcrumbs throughout the final season for Tegan, yeah. and I have a bulletin board on my wall over here with all the things in Tegan's past and stuff that I feel like would make a good show. 
So I feel like I am so excited about your experience as a fan. I mean, I know you're supposed to be interviewing me, but <laughs> you know, I mean, as you said, you know, you reached out to me maybe after the first episode that I was in and 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 have consistently reached out over the years. And you know, I've had I've had people to reach out before, but there was something about you and your consistency and your excitement and like your support. And it was the reason why I, I kept responding and, you know, <laughs> and we're here now. And so I would just love to know about your journey, watching the show and becoming like a super fan. Oh my God. I hope it was never too no, it never. And that's the other thing. It was never creepy. It was, I never felt like I was in danger. It was just I could just feel your excitement, and that was so much fun for me. Um, I started watching the show the first night it aired in 2014. Um, I never watched any of season one live because I worked at a movie theater at the time, and I always had to work. Oh my, I'm getting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell me your story. I always had to work Thursday nights because that's when the big movies would come out, like premiere, you know? Right. So I could never watch Murder Live. So I would watch like two hours later when I got off work for season one. But then my boss at the movie theater um, recognized how much of a fan I became. And he scheduled me off every Thursday from that point on. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) So from... From season two till the end, I watched and tweeted every episode live and made reaction videos watching for the first time. And then just stuff started happening. Like Pete started, the Pete started following me and then Charlie and Liza followed me. And then I met them at Paley Center for the season six panel that they did. And the writers would follow me and then I had a character named after me in season five. So it was kind of like a, yeah, a crazy That thing. is so cool. And then I have two tattoos for the show and. No, do you really? Yeah. What are the tats? Um, this one is of the Keating five. Hold on. Oh, this one is of the Keating five. Oh Stacey. my gosh. West Laurel Asher. I don't know if it's weird or not, but, and then wow. I have, <laughs> that was the first one I got. And then the second one is, I don't think I could put my foot up this high, but <laughs> I'll believe you if you tell me what the tattoo is. It's um, the Lady Justice statue on my leg. Yeah. Wow. That is, that is impressive. <laughs> and I kind of want to get like the title of the series finale under the statue. To, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. You get the prize. <laughs> and then, yeah, just I met Conrad for the first time in New York. So he was like my f- perfect first guest to have on, like a full circle moment kind of thing. And then, yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, wow. That's great. I mean, just that it impacted you that way to that extent. Oh, I've never had a show like, do this to, like completely make wonder, me feel like what that. Was yeah. it, what was it about the show that like that that touched you to to that magnitude? I mean, if you said I, there was a version that you've never had a show to do that, was it? I think the first thing was like the whole mystery of it. Like they didn't fiddle around with giving you the answers. Like they didn't drag it out and drag it out that part was like kind of the part that hooked me on the show but then just Viola Davis and the whole storylines and then the characters and like just noticing that they're all nice people in real life too you know like they're not putting on a show for the cameras and yeah just (laughs) that's great that's yeah I mean now that I'm speaking for you know all actors, all artists, but it's not a, it's not a solo experience. So you hope that you touch people. You hope that, that what you do, whether you're a writer or an actor or another type of performing artist or a painter, you know, what it, we, we do things, not just for ourselves, we do things to, to share with others. And so it must be amazing for the writers and the producers 
if they haven't already heard your story, to hear you say that what they put out, what they gave, um, made that much of a difference to you. I mean, it's it's significant. It's significant to get a tattoo. You know, to get, <laughs> you get one, to get two, to maybe get three. I mean, you know what I mean. But the fact that I have these posters on my wall behind me. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yes, but posters are easier than tattoos. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> so but you know the idea that you have your own you have your own how to get away with murder board with different characters, Tegan. You know what I mean? Like that is right. that means that somewhere along the way as a as a as a how to get away with murder family we must have done something right to elicit that type of loyalty and commitment from you and what else can we ask as artists but to really make an impact on someone's spirit so um so thanks for even thanks for sharing that like that i i will i will not forget that oh my god <laughs> now i might be crying a little bit oh my god. <laughs> thank you for saying oh my god yeah. <laughs> hey, my baby. I'm getting into the mood for <laughs> no and and especially Rose like I think that scene is one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the entire six seasons with mm -hmm. the whole your storyline so just you always messaging back and taking the time has meant a lot like for the past five years and like not to be creep, but I I can consider like a friend. I don't know, but like. <laughs> no, it's 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 mutual. It's mutual. You're not alone in it. <laughs> and like um, always like you could be like on the Emmy red carpet, and you would message me or like close to the Emmy or like for Fear of the Walk. I think it was for the Fear of the Walking Dead thing you were at the Emmys for, and I think you messaged me, and I'm like, oh, she's at the Emmys right now, <laughs> messaging someone in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank you for always being amazing Aww. and nice to me. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, no, I said I there there was something different about our communication that yeah, it was just different. I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it. So um thank you for welcoming me into your circle. <laughs> <laughs> got to go to those Broadway shows like so. I know I know I know I know I know <laughs> oh man but I don't want to take up any more of your day and I think that's a perfect moment to wrap this up for us All for right. now or till our next chat but yes until, until yeah but yeah thank you for saying yes and it was a really fun conversation yeah, it was great thank you for asking <laughs>